Okay, so let's pull together these ideas of hypothesis testing here with a full example. So we've got a, a bank and maybe there's another, a new one built across the street or something and the manager thinks that their, their traffic is going to decrease because of that new bank. Alright, so previously in the past they've, they've averaged 20 per hour with the standard deviation of this. They found that in the last 36 hours they've averaged 19.39. Now upon examination 19.39, yes that's less than 20. All right, but a hypothesis test, a formal hypothesis test is going to let us sort out, well yeah that's less, but is it actually statistically significantly less? Is there actually something going on here? Could that just be due to chance? Alright, so first we got to state our hypotheses and our significance levels. Get everything set up. So we want to see if it's actually decreased from 20. So our starting point is 20 and we're going to run here a left-tailed test. Right, because we want to see has it decreased. We had language in the problem that pushed us towards a left-tailed test. We were also given alpha as 0.05. And if we aren't given alpha, we can just assume 0.05. That's fine. Alright, so next we want to calculate our test statistic. But technically we should check to see well what kind of test statistic should we be calculating here. Well, do we know sigma? Is, uh, do we have a big enough sample? Do we know anything about our population? Well here, our, our sample size was 36. We knew sigma, so we're in good shape. We can use the z-distribution. Alright, so plugging all those numbers in. All right, x bar was this, mu, sigma, n, and we get a test statistic of negative 1.22. So next step, we're going to define our, our critical value in our rejection region. Right, so we know this is a left-tailed test with alpha of 0.05. Okay, so that tells me since it's a left-tailed test, my critical value is going to be negative. So it's going to be the negative z value with 0.05 to the left. So I would go to my table here find 0.05 so I've got something pretty close here to 0.05 remember what we usually use for 0.05 to the left is negative 1.645 alright so negative 1.65 is the critical value that I would use and my rejection region is going to be the area to the left of negative 1.645 okay so here's what my rejection region looks like so I could make a decision at this point, but we also want to go with our p-value method. So let's find our p-value. Remember, your p-value is based on that, that test statistic. It's left-tailed. My test statistic is negative 1.22. So my p-value is going to be the area to the left of negative 1.22. All right, so I could look up that negative 1.22 in my table, so negative... 1.22 there we go that's 0.1112 alright so that's fine our table value or you know if I wanted to if I wanted to check myself in mini tab I could graph that if I wanted to check myself in Excel you know we could we could bring up an Excel sheet here and I could go norms dist our z score for our test statistic was negative negative 1.22 of course we want cumulative and that should agree with whatever we found in our table um, oh and just going back to what about finding our critical value here right, how do we do this in Excel, how can we find this value? Remember we found this and it was estimated from the table, this negative 1.645. Now you can find that in mini tab, or let's just look at how to do that in Excel as well. I could use my norm.s.inverse, put in 0.05, and there we go. 
We knew it was negative 1.645, but here's that number to a few more decimal places. All right, so we've got our critical value. We've got our test statistic. We've got our p-value. We've got all this stuff. And this, the critical value method tells me, okay, that negative 1.22 it falls over here somewhere. It's not in our rejection region, right? That negative, that negative 1.22, it would be somewhere over here. Okay, we also see, based on our p-value method, that is greater than alpha. So both of these methods tell us to fail to reject. We fail to reject for both methods. Now, you don't have to do both methods, but we prefer, if you're just going to do one, we would probably prefer the p-value method. I think starting out the critical value method is a little bit easier. Right? But there, it's nice to be able to do both right? so that you have two different ways of leading you to the same conclusion. Okay, so finally that's great, but we need to be able to put it in the results, I mean into the context of our original question. And so we are saying here that we did find statistically, we did not find statistically significant evidence. Right? The evidence was not compelling enough to say that it's actually different from 20. And just want to show you guys, and we, we did we use Minitab, we use Excel a little bit to do some of this stuff. But I just want to show you some of the capabilities of, of Minitab here. And we need to know how to go through all these steps by hand. Right? But just to check myself, I'm going to go to stat basic statistics. This was a one sample Z test. All right, so we don't actually have the data, but we had summarized data in our question. All right, our sample size was 36. Your sample mean, that was 19.39. The known standard deviation sigma was three. We want a hypothesis test here, and our hypothesized mean was 20. All right, now by default, Minitab is going to set you up with a two-tailed test at alpha equal to 0.05. Right, it says confidence level 95%, that corresponds to alpha of 0.05. So that's fine. But remember, we were doing a left-tailed test. That, So we want to do a left-tailed test here. Click OK. And this should match up with everything that we saw before. A z-value of negative 1.2, p-value looks good. And that that matches up with everything that we found before. Alright, so I hope this video was helpful to you, and we'll see you next time.